about cows. I'm Tony Kornheiser. You know, they always put me in a good mood. Destiny. That was Where good. I'm sitting here in Chicago, Tony, I was going to say holy cow day for Harry Carey. You know, when I went to camp when I was a kid, on the road to camp was a dairy farm really? with about 40 cows. So every day stop? in and out, you would see the cows. I sort of like cows. Did you stop? Did you milk one? No, I've never done that. Buster only, though, Ugh. his family owned a dairy farm, and he has milked thousands of cows. Pretty good. He has. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, Vlad Jr. arrives, Russell Westbrook likes the heat, and Tiger has an unusual plan to prepare for the British Open. But we begin today with America's new fun couple, Justin Verlander and Rob Manfred. The yeah. other day, Verlander, who will start in tonight's All-Star Game, said he believed unequivocally that Major League Baseball was doctoring the baseballs to get more home runs. Today, Manfred, who steers the ship, says baseball has done no such thing. Verlander has called these baseballs, open quote, a bleeping joke, unquote. Yeah. Wilbon, whose side do you on? I'm on Verlander's side. You know that. I've been saying this since opening day. It's a joke. It's a joke. Now... Where we might part company a little bit, Tony, is I don't think it's necessarily anybody's intent. I don't think that, that, that the commissioner's office or anybody directed people to do this, but that doesn't matter to me. There are too many home runs. It's a fraud. They're not special. There's nothing special about the home run when guys throw perfect pitches over the outside corner or off the plate and yeah. some guy goes oppo 430 yards. This is not natural. It's not good for baseball. And Justin Verlander, and I quoted Rick Sutcliffe as saying something like this weeks ago, Justin Verlander is right on the money. Yeah, see, I would like to agree with Verlander because I like him very, very much. But I, I, think, too. I think he's articulating a pitcher's point of view. Pitchers are looking at what's happening and they're saying, how, how is this going on? How are these rum dums taking me deep all the time? I don't think there's a secret memo, Mike. I don't think this is a, you know, operations by Major League Baseball I agree to with make that. the ball go out. I think but the it ball has... is a fraud, Tony. The ball's different. Can we acknowledge that? Mike, I, I think it may have as much to do with the way they are coaching hitting now with the Vogue quality of launch angle and exit velocity. Mike, attendance has gone down the last two years. So I know, why Tom, would all baseball? I'm why Again, would baseball not, want the home runs? I, I do, I'm not saying that baseball is complicit here right? in some sort of, you know, mission. Right. I'm saying that the home runs have made baseball fraudulent. That Justin Verlander, when he puts it on the outside corner at 93, he's used to a fly ball to short right field. Now it's like a super ball, and it's going out. Let's I, not get the message confused. Okay. Justin Verlander's We're primary message is this I don't, is a I think fraud it's the way, on baseball. I think it's the way hitting is being coached and the mm. way people take it mm. out. And, and, and I don't think it's good for baseball, and neither do you. We so don't. you don't think the baseball's juice? You don't I think don't. the strings of the seams are pulled? Really? Because I, really? I don't. I don't. I don't. I think Sutcliffe I think it, says he can prove it. He has the balls. He okay. can prove it. Well, I think it's possible that the ball changes from year to year. I don't think it's juiced necessarily. That's all I'm saying. Tone as we've been over and over and over. I hate the home runs, but I don't necessarily hate the player. Case in point, Vlad Guerrero Jr., he had some preposterous number of bombs last night in the home run derby. Forget the number. Even though he lost the competition to Mets mesomorph Pete Alonso. More important to this discussion is Vlad Jr., whose talent, on-field style, and all-the-time swag has made him a fave with a lot of people just 60 games into his career. Tony, is Vlad Jr. now officially a star. I watched last night. I love the home run derby. I, I, I thought it was great entertainment. I think he is officially a star, but not Mike just because he won the home run derby. Because you can win the home run derby like you can win the dunk contest and not everybody responds to it. I think it is the total package of Vlad Guerrero Jr. I think it's the hair. I think it's the thickness. I think it's the way he hits everything out. And, and honestly, the way I looked at him last night, he's 20 years old. He's a baby. He looked to me to be baseball's answer to Zion Williamson. He really That's did. That's interesting, Tom. Well, listen, first of all, I thought he was a star a month into his career because I spent so much time in Toronto this spring. The only athlete 
you see on television more or who is you're bombarded with more in Canada than Vlad is Kawhi Leonard. And that's over now. So Vlad has got, you know, a country that he yeah. can rule as a professional yeah. athlete. Tony, he was a star right away. He's only got eight home runs. Yeah. But he's a big star for every reason you name. Let me and tell you more. something. Pete Alonso deserved to win last night. He got a million dollars for it. He was great. They baseball ought to give Vlad Guerrero Jr. a million five because he hit 91 home runs yesterday. The, the next person ever had 61. He yeah, was so can I say, plus and, but the ball. Oh, but the ball's not different. It's no, all well, that's, launch Mike, angle, that's please. batting practice. That's designed as entertainment and batting practice. But it was great to see. It really was. Okay. The process of trading Russell Westbrook moves down the highway as we speak. The most recent reports have Westbrook enthralled with playing in Miami. Wilbon, do you see the Heat as the most attractive trade partner for the Thunder? Tony, I, I have done a 180 on this. I, I was against it at the beginning, and my first reaction was, Pat Riley and Russell Westbrook, really? And I thought about it, and I'm like, you know what? This is exactly what Russell Westbrook needs. First of all, Russell Westbrook has evolved on his own over the last couple of years as a point guard, as a playmaker, as a guy who at this point of his career, as you said yesterday, he's just got to want to win I something think, at this point. I think well, so. who better to help him than Eric Spolstra and Pat Riley and play with a guy like Jimmy Butler, who ain't afraid to get in somebody's face and is not afraid to be confrontational when necessary. And so now I love this, yeah. and I hope Russell Westbrook winds up in Miami, and I think it is a good place to go. So I'm going to take the Oklahoma City side on this for a second. Okay. Russell Westbrook does not have a no-trade clause. They can trade him anywhere. If I'm Oklahoma City, here's what I've lost in the last few years. I've lost Kevin Durant. I've lost James Harden. I've lost Serge Ibaka. Now I've lost Paul George. I'm not giving this guy to Miami to make somebody else happy. I got to go out there and get bodies. I don't want draft picks, just draft picks. The I gotta bodies get... aren't going to help you, though, Tone. That's not what Sam Presti does. I'm just going to tell you, I got to get something. So if I have to trade him, I, at this point, I want the best deal. I'm not interested in anything sure, else. Sure, sure. But the best deal, Tony, the way Sam Presti looks at this, all you got to do is look at the picks he just acquired. He's got six number ones. That's what he does, and that's what he considers a good deal. So he's got to get another pick, maybe a young guy who's ascending. So, so you don't like Milwaukee yesterday? Because I, I think that if you're Westbrook, you'd like to go where you can win Tony, right away. I don't I know like that they Milwaukee. can do it. I like your suggestion of Milwaukee as a place for Westbrook to wind up to contend now. But I also, Tony... Who's your favorite coach, if not Pat Riley, over the last 25 He's years other than Larry Brown? Pat Riley, Larry Brown, okay, Bill, Bill Jackson. That's All right, it. So how could Russell Westbrook, wouldn't he benefit from oh, sure. playing for Pat Riley and Eric Spolstra? Sure. I think he would. Sure. We go from one established NBA star to one just arriving on the scene. There have been constant reports that D'Angelo Russell was acquired by the Warriors in that sign and trade with the intent of dealing him once Klay Thompson comes back from his knee issues. Russell had a breakout season last year in Brooklyn where he went from immature and potentially something to an all-star with stud written all over him at 23. So what are the Warriors to do? Does he fit with this new evolving version, Tony, of the dubs? The Warriors lost Kevin Durant forever, and they lost Klay Thompson probably for the whole season. That's 50 points, Mike. Yeah. This kid averaged 21 points. For the Nets, which is exactly the same amount of points as Klay Thompson average. I, I mean, I understand he wants to be a point guard. They got Steph Curry's point guard. You, you got to replace some of these points, Mike. So I don't, I'm not even going to deal with the question of fitting in. I mean, they need a guy who can score, and he can score. Well, Tom, first of all, you let the analytics people run wild. I don't mean you. But they'll tell you how he you know, ran more screen and roll last year by himself than the Warriors did as a team because the Warriors are one of the few teams that doesn't just you know, lie down and wake up in the morning and say, we have to have screen roll. Right. They can score in various ways. But here's the deal, Tony, and I've been told this. I've been told this by someone close to D'Angelo Russell, and I've been told by somebody with the Golden State Warriors that he ain't going nowhere, and they have no intent of dealing him the moment Klay Thompson gets back. And I think that's based on the fact that, like you pointed out, this kid can score that's now. That's right. He seems to have his head on straight. He seems to be happy to join a team. You put him out there with Steph Curry and Draymond Green, and then when Klay comes back, you got something. So let me, let me just go through some statistics here. 
In the last three years, the Warriors won 67 games, 58 games, and 57 games. The teams that D'Angelo Russell was on won 26, 28, and 42. So if you want him to play off the ball on a team that wins, I think he's going to be happy to do that. Yes. Right? By the way, one and of he's the great excited to we haven't go talked there. about in two days, Willie Cauley-Stein, the young seven-footer going to Golden State. He fits better than Boogie. He fits better than a lot of people Golden State have had at that position, probably including Bogut. That's another great acquisition by the Warriors he can play with. We move on. Here is how Tiger Woods is getting ready for next week's British Open. Let us watch and listen. Hey, Nike, it's Tiger. Wake up. It is now 1 a.m. here on the East Coast. Why am I doing this right now? Because it is now 6 a.m. at Royal Portrush. I'll be playing the Open Championship there. In order to be prepared for the time chase, I'm getting up. If you want to succeed, if you want to get better, if you want to win, you want to accomplish your goals, well, it starts with getting up early in the morning. Well, on Tiger has got his body clock in tune. Yes. Does this make you feel more confident in Tiger's chances to win the British Open? Did Tiger say anything in there about practice rounds in, 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 on the British Isles? Did he, did he mention that? Not that I know of. So when he gets up, what does he do? Does he go have one of those bad English breakfasts? Or what, what, what are we talking Bangers about Bangers and here? mash. He I mean, you cook. know, seriously. I mean, I like the other British meals now because the food has improved 8 million percent breakfast. Uh, not so much. So what does Tiger do? Because I, I like the body clock thing. I think that's necessary. I think that's good. Yeah. What does he do? Is he watching any English cartoons yeah. at 7 in the morning? What is he doing? So you know me. You know I get up very early all the time. Yeah. I get up at 4.30 because I'm old and old people can't sleep. When I did Monday Night Football, I stayed on East Coast time, even if we had two or three straight games yeah, I remember in that. the West you Coast. I remember that. killed the rest of us, by the way. That sort of worked for me. In Tiger's case, I would just ask a couple of questions. And one is, why don't you go to England? Okay, why don't you actually <laughs> go to England? Why don't you play golf in yeah, England? Children. You've Come never seen Royal Port Rush. Why don't you play golf? Here is the amount of golf Tiger will play between the U.S. Open and the British Open. Fewer oh. rounds than you. Oh. Fewer rounds than you. I know that. He's not. I know that you're playing across the world I mean, come and on. Tiger hasn't teed it up at all. Not once. So I am not <laughs> more confident. Let's no, take a either. break. Coming up, we're going to ask Richard Justice whether baseball is really better with all these home runs. You know Wilbon's opinion. Now I'm tired of the damn home runs. And is baseball serious about the Rays' proposal to spend a chunk of the season in Montreal? That's even dumber than the home runs. Go to England and get up at 6 in England. Pardon the interruption is brought to you by Nissan. Innovation that excites. And we are pleased to welcome in MLB.com columnist, longtime PTI Southwest Bureau Chief, and our great friend Richard Justice. And Richie, let's start with this. Justin Verlander went right at baseball over juice balls the other day. Rob Manfred says baseball is not doing anything intentional. Do you buy that? Yeah, I buy that. One of the first things Rob Manfred said uh, when he got the job was, the quickest way for me to lose my job would be to monkey with the baseball. When you start asking people to do things, you're going to have the home run hit, uh, leader hitting seven or hitting 100. We've gone through this before, Tony. You remember, I remember 1999, Buck Showalter could reach blindfolded into a bag of baseballs and pull out the one. There are variations through the years. Obviously, these balls are different, but remember, there are other variables. Hitting is being taught differently. Pitching is being taught differently. The strike zone is different. The ballparks have gotten smaller. So there are a lot of things that work here. The question is, how do you fix it? Do you want to fix it? And that's what Rob Manfred and the players are, are dealing with right now. I want to know from my friend of 40 years, Richard Justice, whether he likes all these balls flying out of ballparks or whether he thinks this is a crock. And remember, we sat shoulder to shoulder <laughs> many nights in many ballparks, Richard. Yeah. So I'm waiting on your answer. Yeah, you remember those two to one games that lasted an hour and 59 minutes and I there would be them. six singles and three stolen bases? <laughs> oh, that was fun. No. Look, here, here's the, what, what I th say about that is the game has evolved for 120 years. It's going to continue to evolve. The, this evolution in, in uh, launch angle and exit velocity is an answer to defensive shifts. How do you attack it? 
This is what happens when you get the smart guys in the game. We've seen it with the three-point shot in the NBA, with the passing offenses in the NFL. This is part of the game. Now, what's the next step? I, I mean, if it were up to me, I would not change a thing. I would let the change be organic. I enjoy the game now as much as I did 10 or 20 years ago when you and I were at Memorial Stadium. That was more like 30 years ago, Richard, but I'm not going to hold you to it. Rob Manfred said today <laughs> Five he years is inclined. Ago. <laughs> I know. He's inclined to encourage the owners to pass that three batter minimum for relief pitchers next season. What do you think that's going to do to the game, Richie? Are you in favor of that rule? I would not be in favor of that rule, and I think if you ask the managers, it would probably be 30 to nothing against it. It's going to change, and you know this, it's going to change dramatically how you construct rosters, how you use bullpens and all of that, and there are going to be a lot of relief, uh, left-handed relief specialists out of a job. Again, I would just like to see the game grow naturally. Now, here's the problem. When the baseball has done surveys, if you're in the ballpark, you love the game as much as you ever did. If you're at home, you see it dragging, pitching changes, guys stepping out of the box and all those things. How do you address that and that's what Rob Manfred is is dealing with at this point what's the best way to speed up the pace of play not necessarily shorten the games but pick up the pace is this proposal that the Rays split time between Tampa and Montreal does this make any sense to you you know, you're from Chicago, and you feel ownership of the Cubs. When the Cubs won, you felt it as a Chicago one. In Houston, when the Astros won in 17, I've been there 20 years, I felt it as a Houstonian, and that's part of the magic of professional sports. This would be something we've never seen before. On the other hand, what are the Rays owners supposed to do? They have, they have run the best organization in baseball, the smartest. They've been successful. They've done more with less than anyone else, and they're drawing 14000 a game. There's no political emphasis. There's no political motivation in the city, seemingly, to build a ballpark, to use any amount of public funds for a ballpark. So you've got to explore other alternatives, and what they're doing is thinking outside the box. Do I think the Rays ultimately will play in two cities? I don't. But I think what the organization is doing is trying to figure out something to move, the, to move the franchise forward. It's stuck in a bad spot right now in terms of attendance. Now we get you out of here on this. If tonight's game, the All-Star game, goes to extra innings, teams are going to start with a runner on second. We've heard about that for about a year now. Do you expect that will ever happen in a regular season game? No. But it's going to be fun to watch. They did it in the Futures game in the 10th inning on Sunday. And what Rob Manfred has said is when you try things like this, like a, a pitch clock, uh, like, like different ways to, to speed up the game, an electronic umpire, you may learn things that you didn't know before that may help the game. So while I think we will never see this in the game, I, I do think it's worth exploring and worth thinking about. Is there something out of this that could be of use to us? Thank you, Richie. Thanks, Richard. Appreciate it. Let's take Thank one last break, but still to come, Gronk runs roots for Tom Brady. Oh. Is a comeback oh. in the cards. Don't call it a comeback. He never even gone anywhere. Should Floyd Mayweather be embarrassed by what the bone collector did to him on the basketball court, Tony? I love when Richie's on. I do. I love Great it. Great to have Richie. I love it. With Domino's care.